Um, and welcome everyone to town hall number 111. This is a lucky number. Um, and as everybody knows, we have our community lead, Peter, uh, traveling around Europe. I'm going to be jumping today and we'll be taking turns for this challenge of facilitating the ambassador town halls. Um, we are here um, with uh, Lord Kisi, uh, Rojo, Tivo, Vanessa, and her alter ego. Um, we have a uh, Manuel, Barnabas, Holly, OEP. Um, we have uh, our note taker, um, William Tats and William McCarter. Uh, happy to share this moment with, with you guys. Um, I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to share now. Next slide on this. And it's um, the agenda for today. So we're going to start with an R&D guild of um, new operation system updated. So uh, Kiss is going to go for that one. Then we're going to have a, Van is going to be jumping in with um, Q3 uh, and a reports and Q4 budget deadline upcoming on the next weeks. Uh, that one is mixed, open topics. That one is going to be the last one. And then we're going to have a special moment. And we are very happy to have back Rojo in the room uh, presenting the, and showcasing the deliverables from the R&D proposal for a Web3 contribution dashboard for the ambassador program. Uh, he did present this uh, functional uh, artifact uh, last Wednesday in our weekly meeting, and we are really happy to share the results of the uh, allocation of uh, resources, and happy to have you back here in the room also as well. Um, so, um, not that one, let's going to start with a PC, so I'm going to mute my mic and PC, um, you want to give an update on what we have been working for the last months and uh, where we are and the announcements we have ready for today. Go for it. All right. Good, everyone. Um, so in the R&D Guild, we presented in the last few calls the new operation system. And now um, this is the new um, proposal template that we've worked on. So now um, we plan on um, opening applications for proposals on the... Um, just a minute. Let me just clarify on the dates. So we plan on opening applications for community proposals on the sorry, just a minute. All right. Yeah, don't worry for the date. Uh, you see, as it is on the slide for the introduction of the of the topic. You want to go oh, through, the, through the through the details right, of the new right. template proposals and the idea behind this. Uh, then we clarify the dates at the end. All right. So um, for the proposals, for the proposal templates. Now, um, as you can see, the name, your Discord handle, um, the ambassador or SNET affiliations, proposal name, the subtitle, and um, the topic, and also the date. Now we have two pools. We have the ideation and research pool, and we also have the development pool. So um, you have to select whatever pool your proposal falls under. Um, also, you have to give a brief overview. Please uh, try to follow the um, the instruction, which is 600 characters, no more than 600 characters. So you have to um, show the potential and the value that your proposal adds to the community. Now, uh, um, also, the relevance to the ambassador program it needs to be clearly stated in the proposal template um, and the relevance of the proposal to the SNET ecosystem. That also needs to be clearly stated in the proposal template. Um, also, now you need to, the proposal details, the problem that this proposal, um, this, uh, um, this um, um, uh, proposal aims to solve and the solution to this problem. Um, proposal description, now the milestones. So uh, milestone deliverables, now, for ideation projects, 
there's going to be a max allocation for $750 per quarter. And for development projects, there's going to be a, a max allocation of 1,000 uh, proposals per quarter. So um, you have to provide a well-detailed budget breakdown for each milestone, and um, you, there needs to be a reporting attached to it. So um, now for the roadmap on schedule, there needs to be a clear and precise timeline which highlights the deliverables and the milestones. And um, monthly reporting. So there needs to be a report at the end of the month presented to the R&D Guild. Now this R&D Guild is, this report is gonna be shared, is gonna be added to the GitHub board first, and it's also gonna be shared with the uh, community through the R&D Guild channel. And also the report needs to, in the, and the version of the report needs to be indicated in the, in the report itself. Now, for the team, each proposal is going to have a team of at least two members. And now, um, it's a must for a core contributor to be part of the team. Because core contributors have uh, in-depth knowledge of the ecosystem and, uh, and the activities of the ambassador program. So, each proposal must contain core contributor as a team member. Um, now, the voting process. So uh, for voting, there's going to be um, the application has said, we're going to open applications, we're going to receive proposals. Now, after this is done for a week, we're going to go through a review process whereby we review all the proposals, making sure that they meet the required criteria and uh, the precise timelines. Um, also, there's going to be a community voting. So this is, going to be, this is going to take place two weeks after the review, where the committee gets to vote on the proposal that they feel is most relevant to the ambassador program, it's going to be a positive voting. One person, one vote. No down voting. Just you select the proposal of your choice and you vote the proposal. Now, this voting is going to be done by core contributors. It's going to be done by the Singularity Net Ambassador Program core contributors. So, core contributors are going to vote. And also, there's also going to be a voting quorum. So, um, for Complex proposals is going to be 60 to 70% of, of the core contributors votes. And for um, general proposals, it's going to be 30 to 40%. So now um, in terms of final deliverables and rewards, now monthly reports should be added, as I said before. It's going to be added to the GitHub repo for the project. Now there's going to be a visual presentation upon the completion of each project. So as you guys saw in the last call, uh, GM, there was a presentation from Clement on the research on disabilities. And also, there was also a presentation in the ambassador program channel. So this is going to be done to present deliverables to the community and, and show transparency. And also the, the, reward, the reward distribution. So rewards are going to be sent out post the presentation. So once the presentation is done, rewards will be sent out to the, to the, to the um, development team or the research team. Now, um, so next quarter planning indicates how the proposal fits into the broader plans of the incoming quarter and consider the project allocation and the project integration. Also, um, the core team accountability. Now, any core team members that any core team member that does not um, deliver on on their commitments will not be allowed to work on future proposals. That's a rule going forward. And um, now. The due criteria and um, criteria compliance. So, in order for us to provide space in the budgets for all ideas and um, new proposals, all proposals currently now are going to be completed in this quarter. So, there's going to be space for that. And also, um, this template is um, going to be strictly followed to ensure everything is going smoothly. All deliverables are all deliverables are being provided at the end of the quarter. And um, proposal should not extend over a period of three quarters for completion. That's uh, one of the new rules that have been set by the R&D Guild. Also, um, the template is designed to streamline the proposal process for small projects within the Simulator Net ecosystem, focusing on the efficiency and alignment with the community goals. So the community gets to decide what proposal they feel is most necessary to the, to the ambassador program. This is one of the relevant points we took note. And um, the template provides a structured framework 
for submitting proposals, showing alignment with the, with the single net ecosystem and goals, and providing deliverables. Um, it also allows clear communication, efficient review, and then um, structured development, fostering innovation within the uh, the guild. So this is um, a quick presentation from the R and the guild, and we hope to get your proposal soon. So thank you guys. Okay, um, I'm just a little note for closing this topic. Uh, all that we have been trying to do uh, is to is aim at making us the R and D guild more deliver deliverable centric, uh, to be more transparent, to have more inclusive uh, participation of the core contributors or community members with proposals, and to get involved the community in the voting process. As you can see, we're using all the good practices and experiences uh, of uh, good stuff and our own failures in deep funding or different participation in different programs. And um, we are trying to make it a fair voting without unvoting and just a positive voting and see how, see how that works out. Um, and to not to limit, but to establish rules, to standardize, uh, the process and to get the community involved in what we built and why we build it. Um, and then to be able to trace results uh, more efficiently as we have learned in this last two quarters um, from, again, we are delivering as a guild three finished proposals or even four uh, by the end of this quarter, there are gonna be four. So I think uh, all we're trying to do is to get more efficient. Uh, and bring more results to the community. Uh, thank you, Kisi, for all your hard work on this one and um, and for your great presentation. So we're gonna impute this new uh, template for submission proposals for the R&D starting Q4. And we're gonna input this into a Google form so we can trace uh, more efficiently the proposals. Um, Application is going to be open on August 27. That's next Tuesday. Uh, and be close. Let me see. I need to move this. And close on September the 3rd. Then we're going to have an internal review process from September the 4th to the 10th. And engage the community voting on 11 to the 18th of September. Um, so hopefully we're going to have new proposals, creative uh, ideas on the table or have the community to vote on what we will with the budget we receive from the from the program. Um, so yeah, this is exciting news that we're doing this again to get more uh, deliverable centric and to include the community into this process and to have a, a yeah, yeah, you know, we're building for the community. So let's get the community involved. This is a, an idea a driven guild, not a member's uh, guild owner kind of. We just learn from our mistakes and hopefully we bring uh, good results. Um, okay, that's it for this first topic. Okay, um, Vani, sorry to put the, the spot on you, um, but I agree, let's keep the, the, the treat of the of um, showcase I can the results. Oh, you want to do that Rojo now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thankfully, I was able to solve it, so yeah. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, this is going to be um, a milestone for the for the program and the R&D. Of course, we have been building a lot, but I, I believe this is a, a foundational moment. As we are going to incorporate and integrate all that we have been building into a, a more complete uh, framework. Uh, so, Rojo is going to showcase uh, the web contributors dashboard he has been working for the last two quarters. Rojo, I'm going to shut up and the floor is all yours. You, Thank you. Are you able to share the screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I am. I'm, I'm a co host. Uh, this will stop other screen. Yeah, so yeah, I should be able to. Um, first thing I would like to start with before sharing my screen is to say that. Well, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, can I get a thumbs up or something? All right, cool. I see you, Tivo. Yeah, we do. Nice. Nice. Uh, so, thank you. 
Uh, first of all, I would like to say that this is a work in progress. It's not a finished product, uh, which actually you can tell by the technical errors that I just had. Uh, so yeah, it's not a finished product. Uh, we just want to show you what it will kind of look like, what functionalities we have now. And I will speak a bit about uh, functionalities that are coming next week. Uh, I would say by the end of next week. Uh, this, okay. So where is it? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Very nice. Yes. So as you can see, this is running locally on my machine. Um, uh, the first thing that you're met with when you enter the website, when it's going to be hosted, is this login screen. It will have a sign up page, which we didn't add yet. It should be added like tomorrow, probably. Um, sign up plus a Discord sign in sign up as well. So uh, we wanted to, initially we were kind of, uh, because a part of our project, we were like, we should do a web tree, which is mainly probably like um, Ethereum wallet, Cardano wallet sign in. But then we realized a lot of people don't know much about Cardano or Ethereum. Like even though we are in a web tree community, a lot of people struggle with creating a wallet, uh, figuring out how a wallet works in the first place, making sure that it's secure and you know they're not gonna be hacked and their funds are gonna go away. So we said like Discord is quite, you know, kind of common. Most people that come into our community are already familiar with Discord because they are using it. And it's kind of Web3 oriented as well. So uh, we thought like a good idea would be to start with the Discord login, which we will add this week. And then uh, later on, if it is needed, uh, we, we can go with uh, wallet sign in. But for now, I don't think it's needed. Uh, there is a dummy login for now, admin, admin as you know. Um, and once you log in, this is what you're faced with. Bunch of save your stuff, whatever. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of uh, the dashboard. So the dashboard for now is sectioned into two things. So there are members and then there is, um, and then there is work groups and guilds uh, data. Um, I will start with what we have and then I will talk later on uh, at the end uh, about what we will have. So uh, first thing is members. This thing, you can you can get some data about members. So for, for example, some things you can see here, for example, I can search for my data. Uh, this is the login that I'm, that I'm used. Uh, we got a lot of these data from the Treasury Guild's uh, records. We did some cleaning on it and all this kind of thing. We put it in a Postgres uh, database. Uh, and yeah, basically you can just yeah write whatever person you want to search here. And then what you will get is where they spend most of their time. In my case, it's the video work group and how much time was it? So it was 49.8. So basically 45, 50% uh, of my time went into the video work group. Where have they got their most Ajax? Here it says treasury guild, but I think it's a, a data, uh, uh, kind of problem because uh, most of the previous dispatchment of uh, uh, of um, you know of payments and all these kind of things were like labeled as treasury guild uh, but anyway uh, most of the usd as you can see is from the video work group and you can see a breakdown of how much time people spend on different work groups and guilds as you can see the second one for me is treasury guild i don't know how accurate that is but r d guild marketing this kind of stuff um, and yeah, you can you can check out your data. Uh, to be honest, at this point, I think we should have a conversation we, whether we would like, um, as as a whole ambassador program, whether we would like people to be able to search about all the others. And I think that's the right thing to do since this data should be open. Or do we want it to be like member specific? For example, you enter the dashboard, and then you can see your own data, but not necessarily other people's data. Here, as you can see, there is nothing really sensitive. We're not sharing like, you know, anything specific about people. Uh, I also decided not to share the actual numbers, but rather share percentages uh, for sensitivity of data. Obviously, you can share numbers as well. But uh, yeah, you can see here, uh, we can search for Guillermo as well. For example, uh, just let me pull up his, um, his ID. So, um, you can write, for example, for Guillermo. Guillermo, let's check out your data. <laughs> so 
So here for Guillermo, he actually spent 39.7% uh, in the incubation guild. And most of his Ajax uh, is from RD guild. Most USD is from strategy guild. Uh, this is kind of the breakdown over here. Uh, this is for members. So uh, we have an other views for work groups. Uh, we kind of try to emulate some of the data breakdown that the Treasury Guild had, uh, and we try to add more features on it. Uh, but for now, I think we have as much features. We will add. We have another view that is different, and we will add more features this week, as I said. Uh, so you can choose like a specific date you would like to start from. For example, June first, and end in the twentieth of August. You can choose which kind of subgroup you would like to exclude or include or just go for all basically. And you will see this kind of breakdown. This is a monthly task and contributors kind of count, uh, monthly distribution of Ajax and minutes. Uh, this is not finished by the way, there is a lot of edits we, we're gonna do. Uh, we I, I noticed some bugs that we're trying to fix now. Um, and there's other views, you know, for monthly Ajax minutes distribution, wallet distributions and, and these kind of things. Uh, there is one more view that I would like to share. Uh, and this view is kind of like a kind of a general view on the ambassador program. It tells you which uh, which work group or guild had the most amount of time spent on. Uh, in this case, it's the writer's work group. It has the most amount of time spent. And this is how many minutes. Perhaps we should style it a bit, I guess, to be more readable. Um, there is treasury guild that is the one that basically had the most amount of USD and Ajax is the Treasury Guild, understandably so. Um, and subgroup uh, or basically, you know, the the, the, uh, the work group or guild that had the most amount of contributors and that's the ambassador program. That's also understandable. Um, and yeah, it shows you 100 contributors. And you can see here a breakdown of every single work group and guild with their percentages and everything. Um, and uh, this is it. Now for, sorry, uh, for the things that are coming in, I already talked about the login options. Uh, one more thing that is coming in is actually view specific that will have more data. So basically for every member, whenever they're gonna sign in, they're gonna see this data about members. Uh, uh, they can access this data about members, but they can also access data that is specific to them. For example, the wallet address that they receive their funds in. For example, the, the total amount of Ajax, USD, and this kind of stuff that they received. And they can re uh, they will be able to see a breakdown of all this data um, that is very specific to them that can be seen as sensitive. Uh, we will also polish our work group views, um, uh, graphs and all. Um, and uh, for the rest of the, this is the end of the scope of our project funding. Uh, we aim to keep Working on it, one thing that we're thinking about is we're going to talk to the archival work group. And a uh, good thing that I think we have some members from the archival here. So uh, we, we're going to talk to archival to include an archival view from this, uh, from this website, let's say, or from this web app for people to be able to check the archival data from here. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, in include documentation of different work groups here in here so that people don't get lost trying to find uh trying to find you know kind of documentation and this kind of stuff and yeah we 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 basically are trying to to make like a like a like a common place where people can find information uh, where people can investigate where people can search and uh, this kind of stuff uh one more feature we would like to include uh, and this is up to discussion as well because we don't know what's sensitive and what's not uh, ultimately but we would like to include also exports. Uh, some people might want to run experiments, AI uh, kind of algorithms uh, using this data. Obviously, you know, kind of, I don't know, like uh, wallet data and this kind of stuff might be too sensitive to, to share. Uh, but other data, I mean, it's up to discussion, but uh, maybe some community members would like to run some uh, you know, some experiments, some visualization or any kind of uh, experiments like that. Uh, that will be all for the demo for now. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys for listening for, and again, if you have any questions or suggestions, 
uh, I would I would love to hear them. And sorry for not sharing my camera, just my webcam is not working. Sorry for that. I do have a question about the AGX and USD. Were all of this input taken from the Excel or uh, from the blockchain? Because in the blockchain, we have actually the correct enough information, where in Excel, uh -huh. it's only the imported information. That is very true. Yeah, this is one of the one of the discussions we had actually, uh, my teammate and I, uh, about this because I knew that the, the the data that shows in the the Excel is actually not the final data. So we have to look at conversion, and that conversion or the converted AJAX is ultimately in the export. Uh, so now we're working on an algorithm to to export to take all of that data from the export automatically and include it in the database, but it's not done yet. That's why I'm saying this data is not accurate. Like it's not hundred percent. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the we should meet in Treasury Automation Workgroup because we are also now moving to server side stuff, and there cool. are, there is actually a database structure already for all the data. Basically, like there is a duplicate, even though oh. the Excel is a some point master file, but we are moving to this <laughs> database stuff. So it's easier to integrate different things. Yeah, it would be cool. Actually, what we can do is like, uh, this is great that you mentioned it. Actually, we should meet about that because uh, what we can do is we don't necessarily have to use your database, but what we can do, we, we can, we can do because we will have multiple databases. And if we use an external and some internal ones, it will mess up the whole architecture. But what we can do is, we can sync one of the tables in our DB uh, with the table that you you guys do the you guys have for the payment, and we can sync those two. If we have the same columns, we can just sync them and then work with uh, you know work with it internally. Basically, that would be great, actually. Yeah, and maybe okay, I should just start, add that. Yeah, there's a lot of room from. You want to add something else, Chivo? I just thought like maybe mentioning in the message in the Zoom chat that shared a bit about this treasury good, why it pops up as, as heavily is because before 2024, we did like percentual payments to every ambassador members and we had like a different style of distributing rewards. And um, so yeah, the, the main dashboard you have, you probably would need some kind of time limitations or at least start time of 2024, where we had this uh, cumulative and all the, like the, like a new format of managing treasury introduced. Yeah, yeah, that's what I understood as well, because I think before 2024, also the tag system wasn't very efficient. Like uh, there were like a couple, I think there was just ambassador program and there was treasury guild. Others, not as much. Uh, so, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe uh, that's a good idea. Maybe we should start at 2024. Uh, that's already, what, eight months of data? That's not bad, to be honest. Yeah, agree. And uh, also use, a, as you mentioned, a filtering system. We can include that on the filter. You can select the year and we can start with a, well, we can use all data. And you can filter through the years or through the months. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I, we can use filtering for for the other views as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And again, uh, great stuff. Uh, I was very really excited when uh, Rojo showcased this. Uh, me personally, I have been interacting with a treasury uh, app uh, for the last months uh, and learning about it. And of course, all Tivo's in, insights are are correct. And but there's a lot of room for collaboration and integration. And also the legacy project that, uh, that Kenichi is bringing and also the skills database is gonna be integrating with this. to have everything in one place, uh, as Rojo mentioned. Uh, we can play a lot, uh, but also following us, uh, Bunny mentioned safety issues, your private. So uh, great stuff and let's keep uh, working on it. Uh, then the other update in, in regards of Rojo's uh, participation on the R&D is going to come probably next week on the social media dashboard. We are buying some, we are just approved some budget to buy some licensing uh, 
uh, and we're going to have a, an open source tool for all guilds and members to use without uh, profile limitations. So that is coming next week. Um, Rojo, you want to give a, a short uh, summary on the status of what we just uh, went through for the community to have an expectation? Uh, can you say it again? Can you give us a, a short summary on the update on that regard of the social media dashboard so the community have a, an expectation of when are we? Yeah, yeah, 100%. We're going to showcase uh, and what are so yeah, we received today. We received today the the dispatchment of the of the of the um of the social media dashboard that we were working on. Uh, ultimately, there was a report that was made. I, I think you guys will have more data by the end of the quarter. But uh, for now, uh, we decided to hold the development and move on to use an open source project that is already out there. It's called Mix Post. So mix like mixing and post like posting. Um, yeah, you can, you guys can Google it. It's a, it's an open, it's an open source project for social media management. It's basically an alternative for tools like Buffer and like Metrical and Hootspot and these kind of uh, tools. Uh, basically, what we will do is we will acquire a license uh, for them, which I will work on tomorrow probably. Um, once the license is there, uh, I'll work on the the hosting. Uh, once the hosting obviously as well is there, then um, a login and uh, you know login info and all this kind of stuff will be provided for the members, mainly from the video work group and writers work group. We will also reach out in the next town hall. If it's ready by the next town hall, uh, I will come as well in the next town hall to, to reach out to whomever is kind of already doing some reach out work uh, in social media and this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we will we will do some educational sessions on on the program, how to use it, and this kind of stuff. Those will be done in the video work group and in the writers work group. We will record them and share them privately on YouTube, so it's not going to be public because I don't think it's relevant for public use. Uh, but you know, like uh, we're gonna share the link on on the channel, uh, on the different channels. Uh, uh, one other thing that we're going to do is we're going to be uh, doing basically some IT work for different work groups that are using it. So maintenance, updates, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, again, all what I can say now is uh, if you're interested in using it, uh, and if you're not in the video work group and the writer's work group, please reach out. Let us know. Uh, I don't know which other work groups are really actively using social media, whether it's X or... YouTube or others. Uh, I think uh, Tivo, you're using YouTube, right? Uh, yes. uh, but yeah, and I'm, I might have to start using Twitter too, but not in general. So if it helps to cross platform and cross network communication, then maybe it's useful. For sure. Yeah, it, it does have uh, support for X for, you know, like uh, Instagram, this kind of stuff, uh, YouTube, this kind of stuff. Uh, we will have a limit on on uploads uh, from YouTube uh, because the YouTube API does not allow like very long uploads. So some of the meetings like these meetings will still be probably uploaded manually. But some of the shorter videos like five minutes videos and this kind of stuff will be automated. Uh, I checked out other tools. They They have the same kind of limits. They have like one gigs, 500 megabytes limit on, on uploads. Uh, so yeah, uh, but again, this is a reach out. If, you, if, you, if you're interested in using it, uh, obviously you have to be kind of, I don't know, like involved in a work group or something that is using it, but yeah. Thank you guys. If anyone has a question, please. Oh yeah, uh, thank you Rojo. Yeah, then we'll give an update on it. Uh, we will invite you again next week when, when you have something to showcase. But great stuff. Of course, uh, LATAM uh, will use this tool uh, as we are uh, driven through media. And yeah, metrics are always good. But hey, so we're almost on the 45 minutes on it. Um, so the other one uh, topic, the last on the agenda, uh, probably is the more relevant for us. Uh, here and then later we will share on the channels. Uh, we work on uh, some infographics and some 
detailed uh, data uh, to follow, but it is the Q3 reports and Q4 budget submission. So, uh, Bani, uh, you wanna jump in? It's your time to share. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not long before quarter three reports and quarter four budgets are needed, and it may be a little bit sooner than you think. Um, I'm just posting in the chat a context setting document, and I'll briefly screen share it. We've been working on this just so that people know what the schedule is. So, yeah, it explains for maybe for newer um core contributors kind of what we're deciding on and who's eligible to be involved and how it works but then down here under how does the process work we've got a schedule it is quite tight <laughs> I think we looked at how it worked last time and we've tried to give a little bit more time where people felt there was pressure and a little bit less time where people felt that things could have gone a bit quicker but basically we're aiming to get um the quarter four budgets and the quarter three quarterly reports in from everybody on the 9th of September and we're aiming to get the decisions made and everything ratified and everything sorted and consented to by the 26th of September. Um, that is slightly before the beginning of the quarter but it gives work groups a little bit of time to adjust to things like um, whatever budget fitting might be needed and to kind of tweak things accordingly. We've had a little bit of thinking also about what's a valid reason for objecting. And obviously you can object to a work group's proposed budget for any reason you please. Oh, look, rogue full stop. Let me lose that. There we go. Um, you know, it's whatever you think, but we're just trying to say that you don't have to agree completely with everything in a budget in order to, to consent to it. You just have to believe that it's safe to try it so we're kind of saying yeah avoid nitpicking little details of a work group's budget and just ask yourself would it do harm to the program to approve this if it would then you can withhold consent but if it really wouldn't then you can consent safely so yeah there's stuff to read in there about how the process works but the main thing that we wanted to bring up today is in the governance meeting a few hours ago, we said, well, what happens if somebody doesn't put a budget and a quarterly report in in time for the ninth? And we were, you know, we kind of went around it. Should there be a grace period? Blah, blah, blah. And in the end, we came down on the idea that a deadline is a deadline. And if people don't, um, if a work group doesn't, we kind of came up with the idea that maybe they should just get um, a, a kind of minimal budget, which would be based on whatever their operational budget, you know, the elements that were for things like running meetings, documenting, facilitating, those operational things that they had for Q3. And we base a budget on, on that and just they would just get that. May, maybe that sounds a bit shocking. I don't know. The idea that if somebody misses a deadline, they don't get a chance to put in a proper budget and they just work on a, a minimal operational budget for quarter four. So we kind of need people's thoughts on this and, you know, buy in. And if people turn around and go, that's outrageous, you can't do that, then I guess we can't. But in that case, What's the meaning of the deadline? So we have like 10 minutes left and it would be really good to hear from people. But the other thing that we just want to do, is want to mention is that Guillermo is creating a kind of da -da, sort of red letters infographic to encourage people and remind people to put their budgets in. And we're going to keep posting that <laughs> until we get them. So we're not, I think what, came out of the retrospective last time is that there wasn't enough publicity and you know sometimes people didn't even know they were a core contributor people didn't necessarily know that they needed consent they didn't know what the dates were to put stuff in so we're going to try and make sure that is not the case this time but yeah any thoughts on this idea of keeping to the deadline well, I had a little experience with it earlier, and you guys did a great job with that, seeing some of it that I saw. And I think that's a great idea that what deadline is a deadline. 
I, I, I agree too that I think deadlines can be abused if you give too much leeway on them. So it, it's really cut and dry and I kind of like that. I have no issues with the deadlines, but I do wonder about this nitpicking part. Is it possible that at the first round there is that kind of detail oriented? Like, because I do feel that sometimes like the formatting and the way that people are sharing their proposal would be slightly better, even though it doesn't do harm, but would be made easier to read because I'm on one side, when I read other people's proposals, I'm not reading them about studio should be funded, but I'm doing it so that if I take this proposal and take it to another community and share, this is what we do. It, and if it's not like not up to that par, I'm not gonna do that. But if you, if you could somehow you know, <laughs> collaborate and share, hey, this is a better format to share these things, even though it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, I totally see your point. And I think, you know, maybe that is something that is not part of the consent process. Maybe that is something, I, I don't know. It feels like it shouldn't be a reason to not consent to a budget. But it's reminded me that I completely forgot to mention another thing that has been ideated on in governance sessions. The idea is that the very, the very first form is just going to be a list of all the work groups and do you consent or do you object or do you abstain? And it just means that people are not confronted with 16 separate forms, which we have the feeling has put people off a little bit and has made it feel overwhelming. So the first time, if you consent, you can just tick it and then that work group goes through and you only then in the next round have to look at specific forms for the work groups that are outstanding. Last time, there was about eight of them. I think it was eight went through and eight didn't in the first round. And we just feel that people did seem to find it a bit overwhelming to have that many forms at first and to just have eight rather than 16 might encourage participation. So that's the approach we want to try. And if people sort of think, oh, God, no, then say now. When one change there is going to be, like last treasury could have shared that we move into single form instead of having multiple forms. But in the end, it's like the same thing. You just submit the same form as many times as there are workers. And it does a bit help to narrow it down, what you just mentioned. Yeah, and um, a little little note of that, what we also discussed in the last governance course on this regards, is that uh, probably we all have learned from last experience. The last quarter, we did went through consents, a lot of meetings, and still we reached the deadline. Uh, and it was a good improvement from previous. So how we present proposals, how we address concerns. So I, I guess we won't go through the same mistakes. Um, and that will just to be more uh, fast. Well, sorry for my we faster this time. Uh, and still, there's a lot of room for improvement from templates, uh, formats, uh, format this to help uh, the process. And the other thing we, we did discuss, uh, Tibo, the last weeks is uh, give a chance to education, also in engaging on participation before making it a or at least for leads of work groups and guilds, because um, there was a lack of engaging on the second and third iteration. Uh, and we did some other infographics, not with red fonts, but using other colors too, using some kind of motivational uh, things, you know, because sometimes on this course on all these channels, all the messages go and mix so fast. So having infographic using this quotes to participate and how important it is to shape this by participating in this consent. Um, so yeah, that's what we, we have been discussing, you know, educating the community to just participate on this, uh, to help on the process and to, yeah, again, hopefully we have learned from the last, uh, last quarter experience. Now we have to say it was, it was, it was a good one. Uh, the whole process, clean itself. Uh, we already discussed this in the, on the retrospective. 
uh, all the guilds and work groups, they have to go through their own process, discuss internally, uh, you know, without killing each other. And we did achieve go, putting some budgets down, uh, going through stuff, being more transparency. Uh, at least it was the case in some work groups and guilds that, I, that I'm part of. Um, funny, yeah. Yeah, just to add that Peter did a little bit of research with core contributors last time who didn't take part in the consent process at all and just asked them why not via DM. And we got quite a few replies, actually, and the most common reason was I didn't even know this was going on. So even though we did message people in a in the channel called Decision to be Made, which they are part of, sometimes people don't don't look if they get a Discord alert. They don't. So what we're going to do this time is DM people um, to say, you know, with the first form at least and get them involved. But if anybody's got any other ideas on how best to encourage people to get involved, then please come along to um, a governance work group or an open governance session and share those ideas. I mean, I know that a few people have said, oh, yeah, I'm up for, you know, essay. You mentioned that you're up for getting that message out there. But yeah, as Guillermo says, governance should be done by the people who are most engaged. And that's the core contributors. So let's try and make sure that they do this time. Yeah, and before we close, so we, we agree that we will do on any all of the iterations after the first phase, we will do again infographic and a shout out. So we will reinforce the message. Um, and probably there's a lot of different options. Uh, what we want to avoid or we agree on governance calls is that we shouldn't pay people for voting. We need to avoid making it mandatory. And we need to avoid to incentivize uh, through token discussion. It's, it's a whole different thing. Um, so, Rojo, you want to add something? Yeah, I, I have two questions, actually. The first question is, uh, Vani mentioned, uh, like, uh, people who are uh, nitpicking. And I, I was actually wondering, like, uh, how do we differentiate between uh, Nitpicking, obviously, I didn't read the document yet, so maybe it's mentioned there, but how do we differentiate between nitpicking and like a valid, you know, critique? Uh, the second question would be, uh, are the forums anonymized? Yeah, Bunny Pro, you want to go on that one? Okay. I mean, how we distinguish between a subjective thing and another subjective thing is obviously subjectively so all we've done is we've kind of tried to say to people yeah just have a think before you put in 25 tiny points in one google form that really don't make the budget unsafe to try but are just detail just have a think before you do that that's all we're saying and hopefully, you know, some people probably will do things that other people think are nitpicking, but, you know, we're not trying to police what people consent to and don't consent to. We're just trying to say a consent process is supposed to be about, does this do harm? Is this going to, is this not even safe to try? Because in the end, in a decentralized community, each work group has its own priorities and its own ideas of what's important to it. I might not agree, but I'm not going to like vote down their budget because of it it's more like well you go ahead and you do your thing but if i can see an actual danger to the ambassador program then i'm going to object as for what what was the second question was uh, anon anonymity yes they are but obviously um people who can access the um ambassador's google account can see who did it but we don't share um the details of who said what so that people feel a little bit freer maybe to say things that they wouldn't necessarily want to I don't know not stuff they wouldn't want to put their name to but just maybe if the sensitivities like you know if you vote if you want to vote down the budget of somebody who's a mate of yours because you just don't think it's the right thing you can uh, so how is the data access from the forums so 
how is it? Uh, what is the export kind of uh, process? Currently, it's in the ambassador account, the Synchronization Google Drive, and yeah, basically CSV files. However, the last iterations where each proposal had its own form, so that I <laughs> had to create CSV file for each form. So now, with this iteration, there's going to be one form, and I'm just going to make a different parcel to extract it. The Power BI dashboards that I created there, I anonymized, anonymized that information because we have agreed that we will actually put also that all on chain, or at least that people made the decision. Um, and yeah, I, I raised that topic in the September 1st Treasury Report call to, uh, on that. Yeah, I, I want to add a little bit Thank on you. it. Um, so it's obvious that guilds and proposals need to survive nitpicking uh, different criteria. What we did last time that we probably need to improve on this one is to, on um, um, consensus meeting, go straight to the point. Um, probably we, we get lost sometimes in rhetoric and narrative of why this is good or bad. Just concrete, you know, this is the concern, you address it, simple. And that way we'll move faster. And again, I believe we, we won't have as much as uh, concerns because we, we are learning by building this process. Um, TC, uh, you have your hand up. You wanna add something on this? Yeah, so um, earlier when you were speaking, so um, initially in the governance call, I, I we are having this discussion though. So I just wanted to uh, speak on it. So for, for instance, um, someone does not present the proposal um, on time, not not saying that anyone will, but that is a possible scenario. And if, if that happens, uh, I think the suggestion that was made here was um, they should be given um, the operational cost or operational allocation to work with, with in terms of documentation and uh, facilitation. So I was there was a, there was a suggestion in the governance call that actually felt quite adequate to me. So um, why don't we give them a portion of the previous budget rather than cutting or um, rather than giving them just the operational locations? Because some work groups like um, <clears throat> the media work group, the videos, the writers focus more on creating content. And if we are going to give them an allocation for just operations, are we going to say that they're not going to create content within that whole quarter because they submitted the budget late? So I'm just saying just a, a suggestion. So why don't we just give them um, a fraction of their previous um, budget allocation? It might differ from work group to work group, but I'm just giving a suggestion here. Okay, it's a good one. I, yeah, I think we should address this in the, in the right uh, place, all in treasury uh, or in governance starting uh, this Thursday. Um, so take a note on that on a side and we will or, or also discuss it on the channels. So we have a recollection of this uh, idea. Um, but again, we are learning process. Uh, we experiment, but when we get to something, we need to shape it, not change it from, from scratch. So we have something that uh, Tivo and everyone participating on Treasury have designed. It's working. We just need to make it work better and faster and more efficiently. Um, and also we're gonna have a market uh, price limitations. Uh, so we need to be more responsible and uh, with everyone's time. And I don't know, I'm sure everyone have their own experience over the last the process. Personally, I did enjoy it. And, uh, and I think the process uh, we have designed and uh, treasury is pushing is working. So um, we can agree or disagree on that, but um, uh, we, we have uh, achieved a deadline. So let's try to do it this time again. Um, on my side, um, I'm going to need to jump off all in five minutes. I need to pick up my kid. It was great uh, to have uh, some old, old players coming back like Rojo. Uh, Tivo, it's good to have you back after your holidays. Well, you're still on your holidays. Good to see you made again. And um, so um, if anyone has something else to address before we 
close this or open topic? William or in the chat asks a bunch of questions uh, regarding like quorum and uh, um, I don't know what was it, core contributors. Um, well, before we are going to do this um, process again, so I guess on 8th September or week before, I don't know, let's see when do I find time, we'll update the core contributor list. This will again kind of shake up things. Um, we have learned from the last iteration that we notify now if people are getting dropped in or dropped out um, from the list. Um, and uh, regarding the quorum, I don't remember exact numbers, but I think we did establish something, or maybe in this quarter board document that was shared, there is something about it. Where initially it's consent process, but there is at the at the end, if still we have issues, or maybe one or two members out of all the other voters and kind of disagree, there is still chance that the proposal will go through. But yeah, I think most of this will all be ratified at the beginning of September. Because, well, then I, I will be back. I will yeah, jump through all the governance work to catch up with everybody and then get it rolling. Okay, okay, William, you got you want to follow up? I'm gonna read the question. To anyone who would like to answer this query. Has a quorum number been established for the core contributors for the voting process? How many core contributors must participate in order for the project to be considered accepted in a democratic fashion? This will have to be determined through a percentage system number of core contributors will change over time. The changes that are taking place, have the core contributors voted on these changes? And once the changes are implemented, will they be reflected in the Discord charter? As this directly affects the previous responsibilities of the Treasury, again, are the changes being made in regards to the budget process going to a vote by the core contributors? The changes being proposed here today will change the historical operation of this community. The people within the community should be educated how the decisions are being made and that there is a democratic process established within the community, perhaps in the newsletter. That was That's it. Yeah, thank you, William. Well, I guess, I don't know, on my side, um, this is exactly what we're doing. People are being communicated on the Discord channel for, for all the process. Uh, and we are trying to motivate uh, engagement in the decision making. Um, as we are all designing um, the system, we are governing it, it's self governed. When I answered the question, um... I did miss the charter stuff. Yeah, usually after we have clear understanding of which groups or proposals get forwarded, we ask if they need a channel or create a channel, change them. So all of the Discord stuff will also be reflected. If you, by charter, you mean the channels themselves. No, in the charter, I'm referring to uh, something that was I was constantly reminded of uh, before I took my break that there is a charter here that determines the operations of this discord. Is there no um, such charter? Not quite on, I don't understand what you mean. Maybe there is. <laughs> Do you know what a charter is, TiVo? Actually, no. Okay, let me go get it. Do you know what a charter is, Tivo? Mm -hmm. Don't think so, then. Okay, check check it out, and it'll give you basically. It's a light form of a constitution. It is the goals of the community to uh, grow, uh, do no harm, as Vanessa Vanessa said, uh, 
and do so in a cohesion fashion. And generally, part of that charter in a modern society should have democracy as part of it. And if we have a democracy and the decisions are being made by the core contributors, then we should definitely be getting the core contributors engaged. And if they're not being engaged and the process is being fouled, then that should be recognized with an, a newsletter so that the community knows that what the way the system is working for them. That's basically what a charter does. It gives I you something. I was just confused. What does the Peace Corps charter mean? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I think this might be something that's just called something else, but I do think it's worth saying that, you know, things like a newsletter presuppose an active group of people who make decisions who then communicate it to other people who are not engaged. In this community, everybody who has had a reasonable amount of time, like being involved, is engaged. Anyone can come to meetings of the various groups where decisions are made. And if they can't make it, they can engage asynchronously in the Discord. So there isn't really a group who would be communicating to another group, which is what I think something like a newsletter would do. And also, you know, the decision making process that we're using is not voting. It's cons it's a consent process, which is kind of different. So I guess maybe you know you're talking quite a lot about voting and you know saying that core contributors sh should vote on things you raise a really interesting and important point about quorums and it's been raised a few times like what should the quorum be and i don't think we've reached a conclusion because the difficulty is that you can't well i don't believe anyway i don't know what i know a few people think we should make it compulsory to vote but i think that would be really counterproductive and you can't really make a consent process compulsory so it really feels like we can't force people and it would be counterproductive to force people so what do you do if people are raising important objections or important issues but there's only two of them or there's only three of them or whatever um do you go oh that's not valid because it's not a quorum i don't think we can do that so at least in the early stages even one objection needs to be discussed and thought about what we do have though is um in the third iteration we go for 80 percent and we've had that in place for a little while now i think that if 80 percent of those who bother to engage with the process say it's okay um a particular work group's budget then it's okay so that's that doesn't already... answer everything you've asked but it's some of it anyway well, no, that's a, that's a part of it. So the last part, though, the 80%, that's written in this charter? This is the thing, Billy, that I don't know what this charter is. I don't think we have well, one. It, I don't think. Well, I'm not during, aware of it. Uh, during during the, uh, the period of time I was trying to uh, open the door again at the Strategy Guild, I was constantly being referred to information within the charter that determines the rules of what goes on in guilds. And if there isn't a charter, then the community should have a charter established. And I think if the R&D were to accept the challenge of that scale, I know it would take a lot of their time, but they should perhaps be the ones who create the charter because they're the ones who are going to be the, the biggest growers within the community. So they need the community to all work together towards the develop, research and development that they put forward sort of idea. I'm, I'm just putting this out there because we do not have a, uh, a basic charter of rights. If we don't have that, then I'm not sure that's, that's the way it should be going. I'm just saying about the entire community. You guys can vote on it, the core contributors. That's just my two cents, guys. Um, thank you. The, the developments really do sound great. 
I, I didn't know if uh, TiVo was surprised at all today with the moves being done with the Treasury, but you guys seem to have all worked that stuff out. So that's great. I'm I'm more focused on about something that encompassing our, our community. And in regards to the newsletter, the newsletter wouldn't be going from one group to another. It would be going from our community out to the rest of the community. So is, there's no one group against another. It's it's the whole community coming out of the newsletter. So, I mean, that, that should be sort of promoted. And gives other people that aren't as engaged an opportunity to be engaged in this process. Anyways, that's my two cents, guys. It's an ambassador meeting, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. I know I'm not an ambassador. I know I'm not a core contributor. But I, I think there's tons of possibilities still in this community, and I just want to see it achieve. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, William. We will address that. I, I'm taking notes. I need to do some research, uh, but whatever make us better, we will try it. Uh, so good to see you again. Um, I'm, I'm going to jump off fast. Sorry, I probably shoot myself. Bunny, you're in charge. Uh, I need to pick up my kid. If not, they're going to close it. In, him in, at school, and he's going to hate me. Uh, again, right. great to see you guys. Thanks, Gerdon. See you guys later. See you later. Yeah, I think people are hopping off as we speak, and I, we're well over time. Thank so you, thanks. Thank you, Billy, for raising those issues. And yeah, they can be further discussed in a, another town hall or in other governance meetings. But yeah, um, I think we just need to wrap it up and say good night, unless anybody's got anything that they would like to raise. Oh, I'm seeing right something meeting. in the chat. <laughs> it's just a good night. All right. Okay. Well, Bye, good guys. night, everybody. Bye. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit the red button and end meeting for all. Good night, everyone. Bye.